Hi, I'm Dr. Divya T. Sudarshan. I have an MD in OBGYN with a special interest in uh, female sexual health and medicine. Sexual dysfunction uh, occurs in about 20 to 30 percent of Indian women, which is almost as much as polycystic ovaries. In fact, more than infertility and more than endometriosis. And still, we don't talk about it because anything related to sex is considered stigma. And we still haven't accepted the fact that there could be some kind of treatment for it. We don't know where to go for it. And that is one of the things that we would like to address out here. Why do women find it difficult to talk about anything related to the sexuality? Because one, they may not have any obvious physical symptoms. It's easy to go to a doctor if you have some bleeding or a mass or something related to your periods, uh, where they can tell themselves about an obvious physical symptom. Here, it's not necessarily so. They could be having reasons in their body that is causing this, but they don't have anything that they can tell a doctor that this is what is happening to me. But they still don't feel good about it. And one, we are very shy, we are very insecure. And there is still that fear that if you mention something like this, it would become socially, it would blow up socially. Socially. It would affect, affect her psychologically, it could spoil a relationship and those are the reasons why women stay silent for a very long time. Female sexual dysfunction, if we talk about it, we don't call it a disease, we say it's a dysfunction. That means something is not working well. So what are the things that can go wrong? The first thing that we see is pain, that when you have pain, uh, in these cases, it could be because of a physical reason or maybe because of whatever reasons, that would be one thing that will reduce the interest in having sex. The next could be arousal. Because you're having pain, you don't want to go there. And then the desire, you're always scared that something will go wrong. You feel that you're inadequate. That could be another thing. And lastly, when all this has gone through, you still feel you don't enjoy it that much and you don't know what to do about it. You automatically blame yourself. So there are different reasons why this is happening and that is what we have to understand. This is not just the mind. There is a lot of the body involved in how a person perceives and how they actually enjoy their sexuality. Now when we say the mind and the body, it's always easy to pick up things from the body. So let us look at all the things that could go wrong in the body which would cause this. The first thing we see is blood supply. If there is anything wrong in the circulation to those places, if there is something that is increasing the pain or increasing the swelling or a local thing like an endometriotic cyst, like ovarian cyst, if there is some decrease in circulation in hormonal conditions. In fact, menopause, premenstrual, post-delivery, lactation are all very known major factors where a woman absolutely has no interest in sex and she doesn't understand why that's happening. Other physical reasons as we age, one is diabetes. Diabetes is known to reduce the neuritis, support, brings about changes. We have arthritis, we have other conditions which are you know, long-standing and slowly. In fact, the commonest one that I always say is anemia. If you have no energy, for doing anything in life, this becomes last priority. So that is one of the things we tell you. First, address the body. We check out, so we examine you, we address the body, we rule out the major causes, and then if we find that, okay, this has been solved or this is okay, then go on to what are the other reasons. That is where the mind comes in. So why are you not having sex? Are you afraid or are you not enjoying it? Is there some relationship issue? Are you, have you been abused? Is there too much of stress? Is your work killing your time? Are you having too many other uh, things that are taking up your time or your mind or your pleasures? These are things that we address. So the mind and body usually go hand in hand in this. I'm always asked by my post-delivery uh, patients and all the others that we don't know who to go to. Well, you have to understand the first step is learning to be ready to talk about it. Stop blaming yourself and stop saying that this is something that you can't avoid. You can, provided you find out what is the cause. So be ready to talk about it. Be ready to go and spend some time, make an effort to meet a doctor, get examined, get investigated. So I always say for anything related to this, your first step is you ready to go and meet a doctor. When you're ready, we are waiting for you. We are always here to help you and I'm sure you'll have a wonderful life after this.